Welcome back everyone. Now I know a lot of you are tuning in to hear about the disturbance in the Caribbean and we're going to come back to that in a second. But first I want to update you on how uh, Hurricane Fiona is progressing. If we look here at the, the infrared satellite image, you can see we still have an impressive satellite. Uh, this is still a major hurricane, Category 4 on the Saffir Simpson scale. And now you can see Bermuda. It's probably a little bit hard to pick up on camera, but it's right here. This is the island of Bermuda coming into play, and you can see this, this big hurricane about to pass them to the northwest. So if we zoom in on the, the cone or the track, a lot of things to denote here. You can see here's, here's the, the, the cone showing it moving and passing Bermuda on the northwest side. So passing Bermuda, not a direct hit, but close enough now that hurricane uh, conditions are expected and they are now under a hurricane warning. This is the red area here. Once it passes Bermuda to the west here, it then turns more towards the north and moves into Atlantic Canada. And there are updates for you here in the form of this pink area here is hurricane watch area. And the yellow area that flanks it is a tropical storm watch. So if you're watching us here from Canada, uh, this, this is time now to get prepared. So you can stop watching and get prepared. The other thing I want to point out here is this is an excellent example of why we shouldn't focus just on the cone. Remember, the cone is where the center most likely will track, but not the impacts. And you can see that. Look how the hurricane warning is outside of the cone for Bermuda. And look how some of these watches are outside of the cone. So just a reminder, don't focus entirely on the cone. If we look at the timing of when these conditions uh, might arrive, basically for you here in Atlantic Canada, for Bermuda, it's, based, it's t tonight and, and early tomorrow morning. For Atlantic Canada, uh, conditions are going to go downhill starting Saturday, possibly even as early as Friday night. So you really have, need to have your condition, uh, preparations done by sundown Friday night. Uh, it looks like Saturday is going to be a pretty rough day for this portion of Atlantic Canada. All right, we've been talking to you all week about um, the potential for risk currents. And, 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 and unfortunately, it's, it's unfolded. So you can see we showed you this map earlier in the week and it had yellow or moderate on it. That has now been replaced with red, which means there is a now a high risk of rip currents for much of the east coast of the United States. And that's probably only going to get worse as we go through the week and into the weekend. I'm really worried people are going to go to the beach not realizing this risk. So if you're going to go to the beach this weekend, you really need to check local surf conditions and, and swim near a lifeguard if at all possible. So if you don't know what the local surf conditions are, ask, uh, ask the lifeguard on duty to, to, you know, if it's safe to go in the water. Now, why are we getting all of these rip currents from a storm that's way out to sea? Well, we've told you all week about this uh, huge wave field, right? This huge wave field. And this is our for current forecast. You can see the forecast of 50 feet. We've been advertising 50 feet uh, all week in these live streams. What's interesting here is we now have data from inside of the storm that verifies that it's 50 feet. So we have, you've heard of drones. We also have these things called, the, these instruments called sail drones. So, so uh, not to make it too simple, but it's basically an unmanned boat that we can drive into the storm, uh, just like a drone, except it floats on the water. And this is an image taken uh, earlier. If you've ever wondered what it's like, you will get a lot of questions. What is it like inside a hurricane? Well, this is a snapshot from that sail drone earlier today inside the storm. But more importantly, it's, it's collecting information for us to help the forecast. And it showed a peak wind, I mean, a peak sea, I'm sorry, a peak sea of 50 feet. That is what is creating all that rip current potential along the east coast of the United States as those waves propagate towards the coastline. Now, I know a lot of you are tuning in, wanting to update on the system in the Southeast Caribbean Sea. So it's over here, we're gonna zoom in in a second. Uh, this system, so this hatched area is showing you where a formation to a tropical depression or tropical storm could occur over the next several days. And the red denotes that there's a high probability that it become a tropical depression or tropical storm as it moves off to the west northwest through the Central Caribbean Sea. There's been a lot of speculation about what this system might do if it were to get into the Gulf of Mexico. And it's too soon. It's too soon to speculate out that far in time. And I'm going to uh, explain that to you in a second. But what we can say, what we can say 
is that conditions look favorable for this system to develop into a tropical storm as it moves off on the west-northwest over the central Caribbean Sea. And conditions look favorable for it potentially becoming a hurricane here in the northwest Caribbean Sea. That's as far as we can go at this point. There's a lot of land interaction here. We don't know how that land may or may not impact the storm in its ultimate track. So be careful about speculating beyond this point. There's a lot of uncertainty, and I'm going to explain why here in a second. First, let me show you where the, the image, where the system is here on the big, big board. It's way down here, and if this feels like it's far south, it is. This is right along the coast of, of South America. There's Fiona uh, way up there. So it's way down here over the Southeast Caribbean Sea, and I'm going to take a walk over here to the visible shot so you can see what's happening, or rather, what's not happening. And you can see that while a low-level circulation is trying to form, trying to form, it's not there yet. And why is this important? Why is this so important to, to focus? Because the predictability of systems that haven't formed yet is very, very low. And I want to emphasize that, because that's why we can't say too much about potential impacts in the Gulf of Mexico. Because until this system actually forms and becomes a, you know, a well-defined named system, the ability of models, the ability of, of humans to predict where it will go is just really, really, really low. So I want to caution against speculation too far down the road. Uh, and remember to follow reliable, credible sources like the National Hurricane Center for your updated information. So that is it from the Hurricane Center with your 11.30 a.m. update. We'll be right back here tomorrow uh, to provide you with the latest information as this system starts to unfold.